what totally blows me away, if you looked up in a dictionary right now, and you looked up the word success, it'll just tell you achieving your goal, getting that which you desire. It amazes me that nowhere in the definition of success are the words happiness or joy or enjoyment. And in my view, I don't care who you are and I don't care how much money you make. Everyone in this room could look at you as the ultimate success story, but here's the bottom line and only you know this. If you're not happy, you're not successful. If you're not enjoying yourself during the process of whatever it is you're trying to achieve, there's a problem. To me, the biggest disease on this planet is unhappiness. And the reason why people are unhappy is because we have a tendency to keep focusing, as I said, on what we don't have and what's, what's not working in our lives, instead of allowing ourselves to shift our focus and our way of thinking. We li literally create self-fulfilling prophecies by saying things like, on an unconscious level, you don't even know what you're doing, I still do it and I have to catch myself. We do it in little ways. I'll be happy when the weekend gets here. I'll be happy when this person gets off my nerves. I'll be happy when the kids get out of the house. I'll be happy when I get more respect. I'll be happy when I get appreciated. I'll be happy when somebody loves me. I'll be happy when I get a better job. I'll be happy when I get married. I'll be happy when I get divorced. Okay, that I can understand, that one I get. <laughs> Here's a perfect example of what will happen, not can, what will happen to you if you continue, if you are doing this, putting your happiness on hold if you're not enjoying the process towards the journey of your goal. I want you to follow me on this story. It's the biggest lesson I've ever learned in my entire life. In 1986, I was headlining Rodney Dangerfield's comedy club every single weekend. It was then that Rodney was at the pinnacle of his career. Of his career. He was rated one of the top three recognizable faces in the country. He was voted the number one comedian in the country. He was on The Tonight Show every other week. He had four HBO specials. And he had a hit movie that was rated a nine or a 10 by the critics. You couldn't get any more powerful than what he was as far as a comedian goes, or an entertainer back at that time. One Saturday night, I was walking off the stage. I just did my set, and who's walking through the crowd but Rodney himself. When the crowd saw him, People, they went absolutely ballistic. It was deafening in that room. And they're screaming, Rodney, Rodney. And he's walking through the crowd going, hey, how you doing, baby? Okay, I love you, kid. Yeah, all right. And he goes on stage, and he, he has total command of the audience. They're dead silent. And he does 10 minutes of new material for his new HBO special. And he thanked them for supporting comedy and supporting his club. He went to walk off, and they wouldn't let him go. They were screaming, we want more, we want more. And as he tried to get off, they wouldn't let him go. His bodyguard had to come up too. Waiters had to help him off as people are grabbing at him and they wanted his autograph. And I remember standing in back of the room saying, whoa, this is what it's like to be a star. This guy has the world in the palm of his hands. And it wasn't too soon after that that I realized that holding the world in the palm of your hands isn't what's really important. What's important are the choices that you make as you're holding it. Because the crowd was gone, the doors were locked, the wait staff was cleaning it up, and I went over to the bar, as I so often did with Rodney. I put my arm around him, I gave him a big kiss on the cheek, and I said, hey man, how does it feel to be a star? He downed a triple scotch, looked at me straight in the face, and he said, well, I'll tell you, Stevie, it sucks. And I was waiting for the punchline, and there wasn't one. And he went on a verbal, bitter tantrum on how the entertainment industry screwed him over, on how he should have made it 40 years ago when he was younger, when he could have enjoyed himself. I didn't know what to say. It took a couple of minutes to regain my thoughts and I tried to give him a pep talk. I said, are you kidding me? Did you hear that crowd? They love you, you're a household name. You're at the pinnacle of your career. Most comedians at your age, they fizzled out. No one even knows who they are anymore. You have a hit movie. You have HBO specials every other month for crying out loud. And he goes, I don't expect you to understand, Stevie. All I know is that I sacrificed everything for this moment. I put my whole life on hold, my family, my kids, everything. My right to enjoy myself for this moment. And for what? Because now that I got it, I still can't enjoy myself. It was the biggest lesson I ever learned, and here's why. Because here's a guy that should have been living his dream, instead he was living a nightmare. All because years ago, years ago, without him even realizing it, he created a belief system, a mindset, that signified, I will not be happy until I reach a certain status in life. Guess what? It was a self-fulfilling prophecy. And here's the irony, even though he did achieve it and probably a 100 times more than he ever thought he would, he still couldn't enjoy it and here's why. 
If your journey towards the goal is polluted with negative energy of any kind, whether it's unhappiness, whether it's, it's fear or anger or jealousy or overwhelm, you're only going to create the same result when the goal is achieved because you take that stuff with you. My point here, folks, is that there's no reason why you can't set out to achieve your goal, whatever it may be, to get things done, to make a difference like you do do in people's lives and enjoy the process. There's no reason why you can't do that. And it's all based on choices. And if you do that, that's the ultimate success. Because once you get there, you'll have such a profound appreciation on how you got there. Does that make sense? It's all based on choices. Your whole life is based on the choices that you make. For every choice you make, there's always a consequence. Always.